Hello, and welcome to another episode of Ascribe Scribbles. I am JT, and today we are going to talk about overcoming the dreaded blank page. So stick around, we're going to talk about that. The blank page, aside from self-doubt, is one of the biggest hurdles in a writer's path. And it seems like such a little thing, yet when you first start out, it can be more daunting than trying to jump your way to the moon. Now, some writers have more of a fear of this than others do. But eventually, we all face it. And every writer is going to have to stare it down. Now, I used to say, with a chuckle, just type the first word, and then the page won't be blank anymore. Problem solved. But I'm going to admit right now to you folks that when I gave this advice, it hadn't happened to me yet. Once it did, the first time that I actually sat down to write and faced the blank page, and couldn't get past it. I truly understood what was going on. I knew what I wanted to write. I knew the story inside and out, but there I sat. I was staring at that blinking cursor and growing more and more frustrated. And that's when I realized that we don't always just sit there and look at a blank page. We try, we really try. But as I sat there, the faster I typed, the quicker I deleted, always returning to the empty page and that blinking cursor. I tried my own advice, um, and I typed a few words, and it worked for a paragraph or two, and then I deleted it all again. I'll tell you right now, if you've never faced this problem, you're going to, um, And if you have already been there, you know what I'm about to say. The blank page can be demoralizing. And I needed to find out why. So I did a lot of research. I did a lot of trial and error to discover that the blank page dread has a few causes. The number one reason that we face the the blank page is generally we're unprepared. Now, when I tell you that we're unprepared, what does that mean? You know, because you can have a story, you can have an idea, you have something to write about, but maybe you don't know exactly how to say what it is you want to say. So, while our brains slave away at finding the right words to put down, we're staring at this empty page on the screen or in our notebooks, and it grows more and more daunting. The second reason, at least the most popular, is that we simply try too hard. Now, this reason is more true for novelists and screenwriters than it is for other type of writers but in essence we know that everything hinges on those first 20 pages and those 20 pages all culminate from that first sentence now if that first sentence isn't perfect the whole thing falls apart at least that's the mindset that we've been conditioned to believe in so we sit there and we try harder and harder and harder to make these first sentences the most poetic beautiful question asking page turning type of sentences that we can create and we're unsatisfied so we delete them and try again and we delete them and try again and we delete them eventually not have anything else to try 
and we stare at this cursor blinking at us mockingly. And the third reason is simple writer's block. And this happens to everyone at some point. And writer's block is one of those things that can last for hours. Or it can last for months. I know a couple writers that have not been able to put words down for a few years. But anyone who tells you that writer's block doesn't exist, and I've read those articles and, and, and heard those people talk, anyone that tells you that writer's block doesn't exist is someone who themselves is not a writer. If you've ever suffered from writer's block, and we will cover that in, in upcoming weeks, don't worry about it. It happens to everybody who is a creative writer. But the problem with writer's block is that it is a mental problem that exaggerates the blank page problem. If you suffer from writer's block, the blank page problem gets worse, which then feeds the writer's block, making it worse, and on and on and on and on. So we have these three main reasons why we dread facing this blank page how do we get past them? How do we get past the empty page problem? I hate to sound pedantic, but my original vice still holds true. Just put words down. I have yet to find a case, and I'm not saying they don't exist, but I haven't seen one yet where a case of the blank page wasn't a first draft. After the rough draft is written, each following draft already has words on the page. So you're not really facing the blank page problem unless this is a rough draft. And the one thing to keep in mind is that rough drafts are crap and they will be edited. So those first sentences don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be the final form that you're going to send out to agents and publishers they're going to be edited so just put them down and move on and keep going and don't worry about it and that's another thing we talk about in the five draft method class is that first draft and and what to expect from it and how to write it but going back to the blank page now just writing it may not be enough especially if you're in that third group with the writer's block. So I have a few examples of things that you can do to overcome the blank page. And the first thing you can do is to create an outline. I know not everyone likes doing this, and there are those out there that swear by it. I myself fall into the I don't want an outline group, but outlines are helpful, especially for those who are just starting out in their writing careers or their writing endeavors. If you take the time to do a proper outline, which is also covered in the course, you won't ever worry about the blank page. A proper outline is a form of a rough draft and it gives you everything you need to start writing. So if you are an outliner, if you are a planner, create a thorough and proper outline. And when you start to write that first draft, you will know exactly where to start and what to do and how to say it. And the, the blank page just won't exist. The second option is for those of you that don't like outlines or haven't written a proper one. And it's quite simple, really. All you have to do is pick a spot that you really want to write about and start there. Did you know that there is not a single rule or law anywhere that says you must begin your story at the beginning? It's true. You can start writing your story anywhere you want. And if you don't believe me, try it. And if the cops bust down your door and arrest you for not starting at chapter one, I will personally show up and post your bail. 
but if you face the blank page, just pick a random spot in your story and start there. Now the final method I'll cover here is one that I created, and I say that with some hesitation because I don't know every writer in the world, and I don't know every writer's process, but I have done research and I haven't found anything quite like this, so I say that I created it. Um, I call it the visual web and it is an outline of sorts but it's more of a living breathing growing thing that is designed to keep you on track so while I cover the visual web in great detail in the five draft method course I'll explain it a little bit here the idea is that you make index cards for every aspect of your novel every character every twist every subplot every main plot every sub character or group of characters they all get their own cards and on the cards you write a checklist of things that the plot or the character or whatever it is the card is about must accomplish and then you stick them on the wall now generally I like to start with the main plot and I stick it up in the middle of the wall and then from there you spread out the rest of the cards like a spider's web now there are keys and aspects to how this works and and I've I've toiled with it for years to kind of make it work the best way possible and I call it the visual web because in the end it does kind of look like the main intersecting points of a spider's web and you can draw lines if you want to get creative or whatever but the closer the cards are together the more that those things on the cards have in common so obviously if your main plot is in the middle of the wall the main character is going to be very close to the main plot because they intersect throughout the entire story but a twist that comes out as a result of one of the subplots will be further out and if you have a, a supporting character that only appears because of this twist or because of the subplot they're going to be over in that area as opposed to closer to the other characters or other plot lines so once you have this web built up it acts like an outline but unlike an outline that you have tucked away in a notebook or in another file on your computer you can't help but look at it I mean it's right there on the wall and if you're smart you'll put it right above or right next to your workstation or your monitor so that every time you sit down when you have those moments where you're not actively typing you look around the room you're gonna see the visual web and it's gonna say hey this is where you need to go next this is what you need to do and as you write the parts of the story you check them off you get a new idea you create a new card if the antagonist needs something new to do or you you're writing along one of his story arcs and go oh my god he needs to you know be more powerful in this area or be more elusive over here add that to his card now like an outline once your web is up you're always gonna have something to write about and the blank page will be in the rearview mirror so that's three main reasons or methods rather to get out of the blank page funk try them out uh, for yourself and, and see what works for you because as we know writing is a personal thing and what works for one author may not work for another one so that's good that we have options here so try them out and if you like stop by the website extradraft.com after you create your account you'll have access to the podcast which will give you a link to the podcast forum and you can stop by there and tell us in episode 12's forum how do you overcome the blank page have you ever faced it and what did you do to get over it and if you didn't you know 
what ideas did you try that failed? And just let us know. Let's have a little conversation here about the blank page and, and come up with more options that other authors can try to get over this little hurdle. And so until next time, you have fun and write words. <laughs>